Okay, you guys saw the intro picture. Let's talk a little bit about this thing. So super simple. This is a no loss air chuck uh, with pressure gauge that is designed for filling up motorcycle suspension or vehicle suspension, or if you have something like a tubeless system on your motorcycle. So very simple to use. Schrader valve goes in on this end. Once it's completely screwed in and sealed, then you would twist to get the pressure to go into this and give you an actual reading of the pressure that's in there, fill it up, undo it. So we'll go over that in just a second, but this is a quick and simple DIY tool that you can make for your garage. Uh, if you like tinkering and creating your own tools and stuff like that, you can buy versions of these. There'll be some links in the description so you can see some different options for this, but the link in the description will also show, or the links in the subscription, description, sorry, will actually show you how uh, or what parts I use to get this, get this thrown together. So let's talk a little bit really quick about how to use this before we get into the assembly of it. Very simple to use the gauge. You're going to take and you're gonna take the black in here. You're gonna screw that down onto the shock. You wanna make sure that this is unscrewed all of the way. This is your red tab. This is the actual part that presses down on the Schrader. And then what you wanna do is I usually back it down and then grab the whole thing as an assembly. You don't have to go super wild on this. It has an O-ring in it and it's enough to do it. So once you have that done, you would take your red valve here. And you're actually going to turn it down and we should see some kind of measurement here. There we go. So now what we have here is about roughly 80, 90 PSI, probably closer to 80 PSI. This was actually at 100 PSI when I tried to fill it up directly with the air compressor. So we lost almost 20 PSI just by popping that off. So let's get this up a little bit higher in pressure. Now again, I'm using regular air for demonstration on this. Nitrogen is actually gonna be the recipe of the day for this thing. So. I'm gonna go ahead and put my gauge on here. You'll see it goes down there. Then we'll get up to 100. For this, we'll just leave it right at 100. See, see how quickly that drops when it moves? So we've got it now at 100 PSI. So what you do then is you release the tension on the Schrader valve by unscrewing this. Once it's all the way out, there's no longer any pressure on the Schrader valve itself. Then you would take the whole assembly, give it a quick twist. You hear that air escaping. That is only the air that is contained in the device inside the gauge. This is at 100 PSI right now inside of this, no pressure lost. That's why these things are amazing, especially uh, when it's something critical like this. You can drop a couple of PSI, just like on the air forks in the front, uh, on the newer KTMs, and it changes the way that the motorcycle is gonna handle, or it changes the way the vehicle is gonna handle. So that's why these things are so important. So, All right, let's talk mock-up. Super simple here. You've got your no loss air chuck. You've got your main body here. You're gonna have to screw this in to there. Then you're gonna take your gauge, and actually what I would do, we'll, we'll talk about the assembly, but we're just gonna show you how this thing looks kind of once it's mocked up and all together. And you put your air truck over here and there you go. So your gas of choice is gonna go in on this end once this thing has been connected to your shock or whatever you're using it for. Once it's all screwed in, you can then take the gas and then you just, like if you were filling up a tire or the regular fitting, you just put it on here and then you'll see on your gauge what your pressure is. Once you get the desired pressure, you back out the needle press here, and then you can undo this. Remember when you hear the air escape, that is only the air that is contained within this. It is not the air that's here. Now, if you forget to depress it or take this out, undo this, you will be letting air out of the system, defeating the purpose of actually using this. So this is how it's mocked up. Let's get into the tools and then the first steps of the hardware. And assembly. All right, so now that we've seen it mocked up, I've taken it apart and we're gonna get ready to prep it here for assembly. Let's talk about the tools and the items that you're gonna need. First and foremost, you're gonna want some Teflon tape. These are pipe threads, they are meant to seal, but you want that Teflon tape to help finish the job and make sure everything is nice and secure. Could you do this dry? Yes, uh, I wouldn't recommend it. It's just easy to get some Teflon tape and then throw that on there and I'll show you guys how to do that when we do the actual assembly here in just a minute. Tools. 
11 millimeter, a 12 millimeter, and a 14 millimeter. And then of course you can see it in the background there of ice. So that's what we're gonna use to assemble this thing here. And you'll see it's actually really easy to get uh, get through this and, and assemble it. So let's, uh, let's jump into it. All right, so the first part here, and actually I'm gonna take off the gloves for this part because Teflon tape can be a little bit difficult to work with and you wanna have that tactile feeling and getting it done. So there's a few different ways to put it on and if there's anybody that's a plumber uh, watching this, they're probably gonna say, oh, that's not how you do it or there's a better way of doing it. But this is just kinda of how I learned uh, over the years. You wanna take this and then take it and put it in the direction that is going to thread. Now you can see how much we have here thread wise and you can see how big the Teflon tape is and it actually covers the entire thread. So you can do it that way. You can just cover the whole thing and then be done with it. Uh, but something that I do is I actually will take and put about halfway down. So there is a little bit of overhang there and this is just to make it so it looks clean once you get onto the outside there. So what I do is I take it wrap it around, you're gonna see how much of a pain in the butt this can be. And what I'm trying to do is basically get it to stay to the outside of it, leave a little bit of an overhang, get it wrapped around there, and then give it a quick pull. And that is what we're looking for there. So now you've only got it on the part of the thread there, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and just cut that off there so you get a nice clean seal, looks nice and pro, don't have a whole lot of Teflon on there. So very easy to do. Now let's get over to the other ones. We'll prep the other one here. Same thing. Again, you can see how much of a pain in the butt this can be at times. Gonna move it around, put it there. Let's do a quick lap. Snap it off, give it a quick turn, and there, nice and easy on the threads there. So last piece, same routine, we'll just take it, we'll put it right on the edge, like so, get it right there, and then give it a quick tug, lap it, and then what you want to make sure is you don't want to leave anything here, that's not a good thing. So. Definitely take your time on cleaning that up, making sure that it's all free and clear. You don't want it blowing off either and going into the Schrader valve or into the system that you're putting uh, that gas into. So that's it. You've got your Teflon tape on your gauge, your body, your Schrader valve. No need to do it on this because it's going onto that part there. So we're now ready for assembly. All right, let's get to building this thing. So first and foremost, let's get the body into the chuck here. Now you can use a vise uh, that is that has the soft jaws in that. It may be a little bit uh, cumbersome or it might be a little unusual because sometimes this thing could slip. It's pretty hard steel, so as long as you don't clamp down on the thing like you're trying to, to squeeze it super hard, you should be all right. So go ahead and get that snugged up there in the vise. And then first thing we're gonna do is let's get our star of the show, the air chuck, screwed in on this. So we'll take and we'll just start screwing that down like so. And then let's get our wrench on there. This is the 12 millimeter. And again, I mean, we wanna go, you have a gauge port here. So you kinda wanna like maybe time it or clock it in a position where that makes sense. So right there looks good to me. Might be able to get another turn out of it. Let's. Let's see if that's the case. Looks like, yeah, we'll get, we'll get it. So let's get that right in there. All right, so now look, the port is in line with the top of this. So OCD has been yet again satisfied. Now we're gonna get the other part in here. So let's switch the sides here. Give it a nice snug there. We're gonna take our Schrader valve you're gonna do the same, we're gonna screw it in. This we don't have to worry about necessarily clocking it because uh, it's round. You're gonna take the 11 millimeter, you're gonna tighten this down, and you can always flip it around, use the closed end 
I like that a little better. Again, we'll get this thing. You'll see how it tries to move, and if you were in a soft jaw, that might be a little bit more cumbersome. So now we've got Schrader valve on there. As you can see, I'm probably still gonna take a pick and get that Teflon tape that's showing there out of there. Uh, but just like that, we're almost done. Next, again, clamp it down. I've got the port up here. Let's get our gauge in here. We're gonna thread that in like so. And then we're gonna take our 14 millimeter and get this thing in there. So you might have to switch it up a couple times to get it to actually thread down. And then the same thing, OCD says this needs to be right there. All right. Ta-da, there it is. Our no loss air chuck. Again, this is gonna work for shocks, uh, rear shocks on motorcycles. Uh, there'll be another video where you guys will get a chance to see how we do this on the front motorcycle forks to get the needle in there. Uh, you can use this on a needle setup as well. Very simple. We'll get that one up soon. But there you have it. This is ready to go. You can now use this for nitrogen. Uh, you can use it for regular compressed air. You can use it for CO2 if you needed to. Just depends on what you're doing. So remember, high pressure gas is always dangerous. So you wanna make sure you use proper safety equipment. You wanna try and test this as well. Make sure you get no leaks, nothing going on uh, before you actually go full send with it. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Super simple, quick, easy tool. Links are in the description to purchase this as well as a couple other options. If you don't wanna gauge, there is another option from Works Connection that will also do the same job. Uh, you just don't have that satisfaction of this, uh, this release like that. So check it out. If you guys got any questions, leave it in the comments section. If you thought this was a cool video and this is a handy garage DIY tool, uh, hit that thumbs up, like, subscribe, all that other fun stuff, you know what to do. See ya.